Okay, so this is <clears throat> Cindy. We've got it was actually fairly sunny today, and we we got full on, pretty much full on overcast. You know, we've got the harp, uh, radio frequency, microwave transmission, manipulating these sprayed materials. Now we didn't see any. I didn't see any direct flyovers, any direct flyovers with spray sprayed material today. Um, however, there there was quite a bit of geoengineered uh, cloud cover uh, that is very likely from the coast or the coastal mountain ranges. Um, that was sprayed uh, early in the morning but basically <clears throat> uh, most uh, likely the harp is manipulating the ionosphere to create the pressure that pushes the storm uh, and very likely the <clears throat> the pressure is needed to condense the sprayed materials that contain moisture and you may often be able to hear the harp frequency microwave transmission notably by a sort of a hum it's sort of a hum like uh, when you turn on a microwave oven it has a hum it's not really an external audible hum it's more like an inner ear hum and so basically this is uh, what I what I have noticed uh, in the last three uh, to four years of researching weather modification and weather modification techniques and and then most recently I've noticed that before we get the rain we have the windy conditions and so once again the windy conditions are required to condense the spray materials that have absorbed the moisture and these clouds right up here they're not well this is probably most likely moisture clouds right here but above them are basically the geoengineered haze that is most likely compressing any moisture down below the hay the geoengineered spray materials compressing it or condensing it um, and if we look over here we'll see that tree right there has some kind of strange yellow stuff on it looks like it's dying that yellow stuff right there Anyway, if you hear a hum in your inner ear or at night, when the weather is going through a change, then you know it's most likely the harp technologies, which can also be uh, theoretically 
uh, manipulated through the cell phone towers. So the cell phone towers uh, may be able to produce the harp uh, ionosphere manipulation to create storms. And so, yeah, that's my report for today. Um, so yeah, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Um, I've been researching this three years. This is basically what I've come up with. And there's probably not, not a lot of people that are even aware of this kind of thing. And basically it's about control. It's about controlling you and your environment. It's about, it's about controlling crop production. It's about controlling insurance market, commodities market. Uh, and they will be glad to sell you the medications to suppress the symptoms from the uh, fallout. Uh, so the, the fallout that is producing uh, respiratory disease, etc. And so, yep, that's what's going on today. There's a lot of people that are experiencing the symptoms such as asthma, COPD, uh, immune dysfunction, etc. And they don't, if the doctor can't find the disease in the textbook, um, it basically doesn't exist. So for the new diseases that are as a result of the fallout, people breathing in the barium strontium aluminum coal ash, it's not likely they will a doctor would be able to find a disease for that. And so um, and and or not directly related to the spraying program, the atmospheric aerosol injection or solar radiation management program. David Keith, noted geoengineer scientist, has suggested that 10 to 20 million tons of sulfur and various other particulates be sprayed in our air each year. 10 to 20 billion tons of toxic nanoparticulate dust sprayed in our air each year. And so it's pretty much all on record. They're doing it without any local public oversight without any informed consent although a lot of it is all on record the media will not touch this um, police departments uh, it's beyond their jurisdiction your jurisdiction to deal with uh, anything is being sprayed on us apparently and as far as the grand jury goes, that's the way they stand on it too. So anything that is being sprayed in our air with, uh, in a covert fashion, a semi-covert fashion, uh, most municipal organizations will not get involved with then it's very likely they'll lose their job as a result if they do some sort of investigation. And once again, it's on a comp need to know compartmental compartmentalized system where one system only does what the higher up system tells them and, and that's how they operate.
they're not necessarily motivated by what the people down below them say, the public, the general public. And so we've had, see these, and then over here, we've had one fly by every, every five or ten minutes. By the time one would fly to this end, another one would start over here. And we can see the haze. This is the haze in the air off the coast. Is the haze. Here's one right here, a big. You can see how it's split in two, almost like two different types of substances. Um, so, yeah, it's. This is the first clearing we've had in a few days. If you look over here, you can see one there. Flying, it's kind of hard to see. But this is the first clearing we've had in quite a few days. And look at look how much that that spray has spread out right there it's one single jet spray that is spread out and most likely it contains coal ash barium and strontium very high in aluminum uh, micro dust or nanoparticulates. These uh, this these particulates are moving due east. Due east, and we do have a little bit of wind. Uh, that could be pushing this these sprayed materials um, Do have quite a bit of haze off the coast Here With some definite moisture in the air you can see the moisture clouds down below the haze <laughs> 